Hi everyone, Shane Armand Rowe here. Boy, do I have the coolest device ever to show you to complement your Steam Deck. Stick around. Okay, so let's unbox the IODD ST400. This is a diskless unit. You're expected to put your own drive in here, but if you're anything like me, you've got a couple of 2.5 drives laying around. Now this supports encryption, it supports admin and user accounts, all that sort of thing. We're not going to look at any of that stuff. We're going to look at this as a Steam Deck device. So we have USB 3.1 cable, we have a standard little carrying case, QR codes to get to the guide, and of course the unit itself. Now the unit is kind of cool. The keys aren't backlit. Uh, they're actually kind of hard to read. They're not even really keyed in there, but the screen kind of looks nice. It's, it's, it's an acceptable build. There's not a whole lot going on outside of the keypad and the USB port. So we take the back off and here's where you put your disc in. Now I've got a couple of discs laying around. I have a mechanical drive that I pulled out of a laptop. I also have an SSD drive. We're gonna grab this mechanical one because they say that it can only be like seven millimeters thick. And this is a pretty old drive. So if this fits, most drives probably should. It's a little kind of a weird tight fit here. Make sure we're looking this thing right. Okay, let's, there we go. Just need a little extra push and it looks like it fits. So let's slide the cover on. From a thickness point of view, I think we're okay. And this is an old drive, right? So it's probably fine. And then we're just going to go ahead and slide this cover on. There we go. Then we have the unit and we're ready to take a look at it. All right, so let's see it actually in action, shall we? There's three different use cases we're going to do here. We're going to do um, a Ubuntu desktop boot. We're going to show you how to boot uh, Clonezilla in case you wanted to image the drive. And we're also going to show you how to run Windows 10 to go off of here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount, as you see on the screen, we mounted the Ubuntu into the CD-ROM drive and we mounted Windows to go in the uh, virtual floppy drive. And we also have a virtual hard drive here and we'll take a look at that in just a second. But we want to boot off of the virtual CD-ROM first because we want to see how Ubuntu uh, loads, which is that's what's loaded into the CD chamber right now. And here you go, look at that. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to see on the screen, I know, but that is the, the pre-boot screen for Ubuntu. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I know the Linux people will correct me. But there you go, you have a little hard drive light showing activity at the top of the screen. And you can see that it's, it's trotting right along. This is USB-C and it's 3.1. Now, whether or not we're going to tap the full speed of that's hard to say, but I'm not going to cut out any of the load times or anything. So um, we're going to drone a little bit, but I want you guys to see how long some of these loads take in terms of just how fast this system really is. And I'm sorry that the focus keeps going out. It's really hard to get good lighting on two different objects like this. So sometimes you'll see the screen well, and sometimes you'll see the device well. Sometimes uh, you won't see either one very well, and I apologize. So we're just gonna try it, right? So this is what you would call a live boot disk. They have live boot disks for every flavor of Linux you can possibly imagine. This was uh, one of the highest rated ones, which is why I decided to add it to my collection. And there you go, now you're ready to roll. And it just, I mean, the mouse driver's working off the trackpad, I can launch Firefox. Um, all of my drives are mounted, so if you needed to go into one of the EXT4 partitions, um, you'd be able to do that with this live boot disk. And that's really, really cool to be able to do certain things that maybe you couldn't do when you were booted into the system normally. So that's, that's really, really, really neat. This one even auto-ejected. You see right here, it's kind of hard to see, because especially since I didn't hold it right. But you can see here that uh, the disk actually ejected with a command from the computer. That's kind of interesting. So now we're going to go ahead and mount Clonezilla, right? So why would you want Clonezilla? Well, you're going to change out your 64 gigabyte uh, SSD and you're going to put a one terabyte in there. You might want to back this thing up or clone it. So we're going to use Clonezilla. We're not going to actually do a full backup. I just want you to see that it boots. And once again, this is a virtual live boot CD. And there you can see Clonezilla is going to boot and you could choose which Clonezilla you wanted to start with. But you can see that it does indeed boot as it should. All right, next up is Steam Recovery. So there's three devices here, even though two show mounted. 
The virtual hard drive that you see mounted here is a different partition that you can't see. That is actually the Steam OS recovery partitions. And we're gonna show you later on in this video how to actually set this up because there's a couple of little gotchas in here that if you don't know exactly what you're doing, you might have problems but I'm gonna take you right through it so you won't have any problems at all. So as you can see, it's booting relatively quickly. I mean, it's just as fast as any flash drive that I had used to boot into recovery. And you can see recovery's coming up. And there it is. I mean, how great is that? I can literally have like an entire utility set for all my Steam Deck needs, including recovery, right here on a single disc. Last but not least, here's what you were probably waiting to see. If we launch the virtual floppy, then we will actually see Windows booting. And this is my own personal Windows 10 to go image. And uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna let this thing go ahead and boot the entire time so you can see just how long it takes. A lot of people don't wanna run something separate like a Windows to go off a micro SD card because they're worried about trashing the card or they're worried about speed or performance. What we essentially have here is a flash drive. I, I killed the last session without shutting down, so you know how Windows is. Uh, so disregard that, you won't probably even see that. But my point is, now you've got the best of both worlds. You don't have to dual boot off your internal drive. You don't have to ruin anything or risk ruining anything. You can still use Windows 10 to go. It's relatively fast, and there's really no chance of corruption because I'm on an SSD inside this box right now. How great is that? So now you have access to Windows, Ubuntu Live, Clonezilla, Steam Recovery, and the sky's the limit. I could have added tons more stuff on here. Uh, I could have put other boot drives or virtual hard drives. So many things we could do. Okay, now that I've showed you what this guy can do, let me show you how to configure it to work well with the Steam Deck. So first up, you're gonna follow the Steam Deck recovery. You're gonna download the recovery image. You're going to uh, use Rufus and you're going to write that directly to this device's hard drive. You're gonna put a drive in, you're gonna make sure there's nothing on it, then you're going to write the recovery. So the recovery only takes a few gigabytes. We wanna recover all that rest of that space to put ISOs and image files on. So we're gonna find the biggest EXT4 partition. We're using the Steam Deck's KDE Partition Manager for this. We're going to resize it, and we're gonna shrink that big giant partition that's all empty of stuff, we're gonna shrink that down. We're gonna give it a, a gigabyte or two just to have a little bit of extra storage space in there just in case, but not too much, just a little bit over what the uh, Steam Recovery Partition needs. We're gonna hit okay. And we're gonna take this unknown space and we are going to make a new EXFAT partition. And then we'll just hit apply. So what it's gonna do now is take that big fat EXT4 partition that's used for the recovery OS, it's going to shrink it down to a little tiny spot, all that it needs, and all of the rest of the space on this drive is gonna be available for us to copy ISO files to, or image files to. All right, looks good, right? So now we have this big fat uh, partition here for EXT fat. Now back on your Windows machine, you're gonna plug this guy in and you're gonna get a whole bunch of drive letters. Some of them are going to be the recovery uh, partitions. And then of course, you're gonna have the partition that has um, your uh, availability to put ISOs on. Of course, it'll be the big one. You can see here, I have Clonezilla, I have Ubuntu, and I have my Windows 10 to go. Now, IMG files don't work. You'll have to rename them to IMA. IMA, I don't know why that's the case, but you do. I hopefully save you some time. And no, you cannot put the Steam Recovery OS image file in here and boot from it. It does not work. Once prepped and you plug this guy in, you're gonna be looking at the partition that has the Steam OS stuff on it. Hold down four and choose XFAT from the uh, selection. Now you have access to all of the ISOs and image files. Now, you're also going to need to probably configure this by hitting the gear and going to mode setting. You're going to want to set it up exactly like you see here. A locked USB ODD, an unlocked USB VHD, and an unlocked USB HDD. That is exactly the settings I used at the early part of this video. You'll want to do exactly the same. 
Okay, so we know this is an amazing device to have for your Steam Deck, but if you're an IT professional, a home enthusiast, someone who has to carry around Windows 10, Windows 11, boot disks, live disks, recovery disks, every technician on the planet should have one of these. And being able to have access to Steam OS recovery, Windows 10, Windows 11 if you wanted to dip your toe, whatever it is you're looking to do from an external storage standpoint, this little guy is amazing. I can't recommend it enough. Thanks always so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the little bell, blah, blah, blah. You guys know what to do. Leave a comment down in the description below. Do you have one of these? Are you thinking about getting one of these? If you do, let me know in the description below. I'd love to know what you guys think of this thing. I am just totally blown away. This could be like the best 90 bucks I've ever spent. I'm Shane Armonroe. Thanks always so much for watching and take care.